There aren't many people who don't have some sort of family connection to that war. To mark its end, four presenters from BBC News, including myself, are telling the stories of our relatives, the roles they played, what they did, whether here on the home front, in the Atlantic, or deep in Burma's jungle. We start with Mashal Hussein and her grandfather. He was one of more than two million men who fought for Britain in the Indian Army. They served in deserts and jungles, from African battlefields to Asia and in Europe. And without what was then the British Indian Army, the war might not have been won. It's all commemorated here at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, which has trained officers for generations, and where this entire room honours the contribution of South Asian troops through successive conflicts in different parts of the world. My grandfather, Sayyid Shahid Hamid, was at university in northern India when he found out he'd won a place at Sandhurst. It was 1932, and he was one of the few Indian cadets. I'd like to show you this lovely photograph of your grandfather. It's part of the Royal Military College 2nd 6th Tennis Team. Name there, and you'll spot him there. Yes. This is one of the earliest pictures I've ever seen of him, because he would only have been about 20 at this point. Back home, he became a husband and father. And as war broke out, India began to play a central role. No praise is too high for these fine men who are doing so much for the empire. When Britain went into the war, it was a, an imperial endeavor. And the imagination was that everybody around the empire would come to help and to serve and save the motherland. So what was India's contribution within that? So India's contribution is mainly manpower. There are vast numbers of men recruited, but it also produces raw materials, uniforms, timber, goods, cotton. There's a lot of drive to, to build up factories, munitions factories in India itself. From December 1941, the conflict came closer to India as Japanese offensives threatened British strongholds in Asia. Shahid was ordered to Burma, his ship arriving in Rangoon as an airstrike was taking place. If you land up in a harbour and you find yourself in the middle of an enemy bombing raid, it couldn't be a pleasant uh, experience. It was the first of many searing experiences which have been pieced together by my uncle Ali. When the Japanese surrounded Rangoon, uh, they blocked the road and uh, he writes that there was a column of over 40 miles long. Where's the water coming from? Where's the food coming from? Uh, what's happening to the injured? What did he see of the plight of the civilians, all of those who were trying to get away from the Japanese invasion? The plight of the civilians is terrible. He says that a stage came where they were offering a fistful of rubies for a fistful of rice. Burma would soon fall to the Japanese, and Shahid later reflected upon the perils of the time. It was terrible when the wooden houses caught fire and the ammunition dumps started exploding. I was blown into a trench and thought that I'd been hit and could not open my eyes. The picture that emerges from these pages is of the intensity of this period in Burma, and I didn't realize until now what my grandfather faced from the very moment that he arrived. And for him, it comes to a very sudden end when an injury to his eyes means that he is evacuated back to India in April 1942. But what was happening around him and elsewhere in the region as Japan advanced through one territory after another was a reality check for Britain and the Allies. With the Burma campaign, were the Allies taken by surprise when the Japanese invaded? It was a massive shock. It's hard to overestimate the, the scale of the shock and anxiety that ran through the British Empire when the Japanese came uh, through Singapore and then took over that whole half of the Asian Empire. And Burma uh, was not expected to fall. Some of those who lived through those years are still with us today, veterans of an army made up not of conscripts, but volunteers, and who joined up for many reasons. Very, very the poor people. For Inayat Ali, it was a livelihood. 
when the British asked us to help, we thought there is no work available. So instead of going hungry, we would do this. And there was the hope that if the British won the war, they would give India its independence. In many ways, that greater rise in nationalism that's taking place in India is reflected in the army. There is a greater sense that these young men and officers who are coming through in particular, many of them are nationalists and they believe in actually achieving a greater status for India. Whilst they may not be enthusiastically pro-Raj, what they definitely are anti is anti-Japanese occupation. The army that defeats the Japanese, it, we refer to often as the British Indian Army, it is an Indian army that defeats the Japanese. Whilst they are fighting on the British side, who they're really fighting for is India. After the war, my grandfather continued his military career and had a long life. Others were not so fortunate. A war that drew in many countries means that today, some lie far from home. Their service is commemorated, but their stories are slipping further into the past. Now it is up to us to remember, to learn, to be grateful for the courage of those who went before.